you know how it is. Like guys don't care about us. Girls were like, wait. Yeah, like, ah. Hello everybody and welcome to my Friday Night Live show. Once again, it's come round incredibly quickly. Um, hi everybody, there I am. Uh, so everybody that's watching live, uh, welcome. And obviously if you're watching me on replay as well, welcome too. It's lovely to have you here. For those of you that have never watched me before, I'm a self-published author of romantic suspense novels. I've got one novel currently out. My second novel will be out uh, hopefully next, hang on, we're in February, aren't we? So hopefully the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And I've just started writing my third novel. So um, that's that's kind of what I do. I'll put my website and all my information in the comments a bit later on. Um, but regular viewers will know that this is my behind the scenes show. So this isn't really about me. This is about my guests. And today I've got an amazing guest with me. She's from sunny California. So she's exceedingly mm -hmm. lucky. <laughs> um, her name is Jessica Payne. And I'm just going to read you a little bit um, about uh, what she's uh, told me. So she's an award winning digital marketing expert. Uh, she's a popular live show host, so she does a lot of shows um, a bit like I'm doing here today. And she's a successful advocate for creating positive change through the power of social media. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces she's told me, which I'm going to bring up in the show as well. But I just want to go straight to Jessica now, welcome her and say thank you very much for coming along. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm glad to be on here. Um... I am so impressed by everything you just mentioned. You're on your third book. It's like I'm writing notes here. It's sort of you're, you've already inspired me. But uh, I'm happy to happy to be hailing from California. You are already into your weekend. I've got a good eight hours more. So happy to be hailing today. Uh, so uh, my husband's watching. He's very good. He watches every one of my shows so that I've always got somebody watching. <laughs> Hey, Mark. So he's just saying hi. Um, Fantastic. But um, yes, no, our day is, uh, we're just gone eight o'clock here. So our day is sort of ending. We are heading into Friday night and the weekend, but you've still got half a day to go. I do. So, uh, you know, when I, uh, when I lived in London for a short time, it was always nice to poke fun at my friends still at work in the office. And now the roles are reversed. So yes, uh, I, <laughs> I'm a little jealous of you uh, heading into the weekend. But yeah, I mean, I guess every day is a work day, right? When you run your own business. So. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't really make much difference, does it? I mean, I I don't know about you, but I find myself working at, well, silly hours, really. Yeah. Um, often yeah. that's when you get, that's when you get the most done. So, absolutely. yes, it doesn't make much difference. But um, yeah, as I said in the intro, thank you ever so much for coming on. And I'm, sure. a, bit, um, I'm a bit in awe of you because I've seen some of your shows um, and I've seen obviously what you do and I know how popular you are. So yeah. maybe you could just kind of give me a little bit of background or obviously give the viewers a little bit of background and um, tell us how it all started and, and basically what you do. Sure. Uh, well, uh, some of you may, I don't know, maybe recognize me or not. Uh, I have a live show too, just like Anne Marie does. My show is uh, it's a very uh, unique title, Jessica Payne Live, but it works for me. <laughs> and uh, essentially, I've been doing for uh, for almost six months. Um, and basically, my background is communications, marketing, and brand. And social media has been at the center of my world for my clients um, since it's been around. And so this little thing called live streaming came about around this time last year and it's improved. And finally, finally, I embraced live streaming. And one thing I've always loved to do is teach. And I also love to interview experts. So this um, this live streaming trend that that is happening actually excites me because I think for the first time, people who are experts in their own uh, craft or their own industry finally have a platform to just kind of be themselves, which is sort of my mantra is real is greater than perfect because I don't know about you, but I constantly chase the perfection. So that's my own convincing of myself. So my show talks about entrepreneurial spirit, challenges, career, and of course, social media, but all with that sort of authenticity mandate, because I think you mentioned, you know, social uh, media has such potential to create positive change. I think we need a, lot, a little bit more of that in this world. So live streaming has really kind of helped me get my message out and it keeps me busy. So I enjoy it. Yeah. No, I mean, I've only um, been doing live streaming since uh, November. Right. November so, so not, not very long at all. Right. Um, but um, I, I, as we were saying before we came on air, I do really enjoy it. 
And I think it is a, it's a fantastic way for me to meet new people, which is part of what I wanted to do. Um, yes. People, uh, as an author, people fascinate me. I love to know <laughs> what people's lives, you know, obviously, you know, not the ins and outs of it, but I just like to know what makes, what inspires people, what makes them tick, what makes them get up in the morning. Um, you know, those kind of things. Those are the sort of questions that I like to, to, to know. Yeah. And so this media has been brilliant for me to meet people such as yourself so that I can actually ask those very questions. Um, and that wouldn't happen if we didn't have this media. And I've, I've said this before no. to, to many other guests. So I think it is fantastic um, that we are able to embrace it as, as we do. So I was going to ask you, actually, um, you mentioned... Um, let me see which was it oh authentic conversations I was going to ask you that a bit later on but I think you mentioned it a little minute a minute ago you said about authenticity yeah um when you sort of talk about auth sort of authenticity authentic conversations are, are you sort of saying literally just being about being yourself rather than putting this perfect persona out there that we think we should have is that what you mean by authentic conversations yeah, it, exactly. And I think it comes from two halves. So I think from a business standpoint and just knowing what we know about how people prefer to engage with brands, right? If you're a business on social media, we all have an objective and we're usually selling something or trying to drive some sort of action. And so we're here for business reasons. And increasingly, especially with younger generations, um, kind of creating a mandate that we all follow in terms of how we should use um, social media. Increasingly, people just don't want to be sold to. And that doesn't mean they don't want to buy your product or engage with you on social media. They just want more warmth and realness. And I think that's where you're seeing a lot of brands that are successful are those that are kind of walking away from the flashy sizzle reels and the, and the huge ads, although those can be creative. These are the types of brands who are putting real people on their Facebook pages, are doing live streams, are doing product demos that aren't entirely perfect. I think live yeah. streaming is a beautiful tool because anything can happen during a live. But I think it's all about the new trend right now, which is going to stay, is consumers just want less flash, less gloss, and they want more authenticity because frankly, there's a lot of skepticism on social media because it kind of has a bad rap right now for being kind of a fake or artificial place. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the, the brands and the businesses that just embrace being themselves, not perfect, admitting when they make a mistake, um, bringing the outside in are actually finding it a, a lot more um, powerful. And, and you're going to see your engagement increase. You're going to see your product sales go up. But most, most of all, it's really just a matter of how are you going to instill trust? How are you going to make those connections? And people trust what they can identify with. So me sitting across from you, another woman, we're similar age, I identify with you immediately. You run your own practice. I run my own practice. People are looking for similar similarities. And if you're perfect, yeah. they can't identify with that. No, uh, no. So that's kind of what I mean by that. And, yeah, I mean, that's, that's true, isn't it? Because you've always got um perceptions of people that you believe yeah. to be perfect um you know just sort of silly examples when you um you know for me maybe when i've taken the children to school and you've seen the woman who's got you know perfect hair and perfect makeup and perfect clothes and yeah. perfect car and you're sort of walking along in your sort of tracky bottoms and your hair sticking up and you haven't got any yeah. makeup on and and you just think oh you know I'm a million miles away from that and yeah. it's quite dangerous because you can buy into that and you can start to really um sort of compare yourself to that um to the negative um yeah. you know and sort of say oh I'm no good I'm whatever you know however you might do it yeah. um and I think being able to understand that perfection is not reality and perfection is it, it's um it's different for everybody in any case. I mean, what is perfection? There is no definition of perfection. You know, Absolutely. what you think what you think is perfection is not what I think is perfection, et cetera, et cetera. And it's something that none of us are ever going to achieve, no matter how hard we try. So, bring, right. so bringing it back down and making it real, I think, is really valuable, not only in, in business, but also from a personal point of view for particularly women, because I think we find it harder than, than than men to sort of, we're doing more of the comparisons and we're doing more of the, you know, sort of, oh, I'm 
bigger than that, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really value that sort of kind of core principle that you've got there. I think that's that's brilliant. Thank you. I think it's um, you really hit on it. I think, you know, one, when you were talking about perfection, I was thinking we always go to celebrities. Right. Who's a good example of this? Who's a good so um, I don't know if you remember the, the singer Alicia Keys, was it two years ago or, or last year? She started to just do social media posts without makeup on. Right. And, okay. um, and that was seen as like revolutionary because every other celebrity we see, we all know is photoshopped or perfect, whatever. And it started this really interesting conversation and it just goes to show you how hungry we are especially as women just to see other real women and so she started to not wear makeup and then i'm a fan of chrissy teigen is another one she'll just tweet she has no filter um which i think serves her brand but um just to your point i think it's it's one thing for us to 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 be ourselves uh you know because that's frankly smart business strategy but but i would challenge people be yourself for yourself because yeah. you know we we were just talking about it we spend a lot of our time invested in trying to promote our business just doing the research alone producing our shows right hosting our shows promoting our shows this is our time and and so it's not going to fulfill you if it's not coming from a, a true place where you're happy and what i found was the disconnect typically when i talk to people who feel like they're just burning the wick at both ends they're not happy it's like i think you're motivated by typically by chasing something typically money or sales it's like let's bring it back to where why you first got started out what lit you up and yeah it doesn't take very long to find that motivation again and it's typically because they've walked away from their they've got caught up and it's so easy to get caught up in the yeah. sales um, machine um yeah. when really that it's that's really not what it should be all about does that make sense yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's very pertinent to me as well, because I've, I've done a number of different marketing courses over the years, um, some that I've paid for, some that I've, I've picked up mm -hmm. from, you know, various people. And yeah. I've never I haven't hit on one particular thing that works for me yet. Obviously, what I'm trying to market isn't a traditional business. It's not, you know, um, it, it, you know, I, I don't have sort of loads of candles for sale or, or whatever, it, you know, just as an ex example. Right. And every product that I make takes a very, very long time to produce. So it's not like I can say, well, um, you know, OK, I've got one book out and the second one's coming out. But, you know, it, it's going to be six, nine months, maybe more before the third book is written and produced and out there. So you've got a very, very slow period of growth in terms of the products that you're selling. Right. Which makes I personally find makes it more challenging because I can't keep putting out things saying, guess what? I've got a new this in stock or I've got a new that in stock or this is what you need for that. This is the solution to your, um, you know. So for me, I've had to look at embracing other ways of promoting yeah. me rather than actually my product. Um, right. Obviously, my, my product is is what I want to, you know, that's that's kind of my goal. But I need to put myself out there because at the moment that's my sort of leverage tool if that sort of makes sense I don't know okay. and with with all of that obviously as you well know you can spend hours and hours and hours on marketing yeah. and, and by then, and large for me you don't get anywhere <laughs> right and you, know, oh, you can so you can post on Facebook you can post on Twitter you can whatever you you know whatever you want to do and you will find little if no if no return. Um, yeah. So I found myself not, you know, the not too distant past, sort of just getting into that spiral where you're spending all your time yes. on social media, on wherever too. it might be. And then you think, hang on a minute, why am I doing this? And I'm doing it because I love to write. And I'm doing it because I want to write books. I'm doing it because I want to make people happy and I want to give them that time to escape and I want them to enjoy what I'm writing. Yeah. And the rest of it is just kind of a bit of a merry-go-round, really. Yeah. And that balance is, you know, I find for me incredibly difficult, particularly with yeah. the product that I'm trying to sell. Right. Yeah, It um, you know, our worlds are so 
you're not alone is all I can say. Uh, <laughs> I think for me, the, you know, I, I am, so I'm launching a course and so kind of similar to your, your novels, they take a while to like, I've been working on this thing for six months, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it'll be another six months before I launch something else. And so that I feel like that's, that's similar. So yeah, it's sort of like, and I think, again, I think that's where maybe live streaming can really help folks like you and me. Um, because at the end of, I'm huge into archetypes. Okay. So I don't mean to judge or label, but clearly you are a storyteller. You are a scribe because you literally write, write novels. So I'm a huge, like my chief archetype is a hermit. That's a whole other conversation, a whole other show. <laughs> I can isolate really well. Um, but, but at the end of the day, you're a storyteller. And so your ability to, uh, and a lot of people wish they were, and they're not. So you have this power of language uh, that you are, you're, it's one thing to say you're a writer, but you've actually produced books, novels, written work. So that, that, that shouldn't be overlooked. Living in LA, everyone's a screenwriter, but no one's finished. You know what I mean? So I understand yeah. Yeah. having actually produced a body of work. And, um, you know, I think live streaming can really uh, help serve people like yourself who um, who have a command of the language, who are natural storytellers. I think the biggest thing is when it comes to, and I'm there with you. Th there's nothing worse than that feeling of I've oh, I've just I've just wasted a whole day doing this. I knew I was wasting time when I was doing it, but I felt I needed to do it. You know, whether it's writing a blog post that sometimes I can write a blog post in five minutes. Sometimes I'm yeah. like, how have five hours gone by? This is, you know, and then you get the guilt and the shame. I should be doing yeah. anything but this. But this yeah. And the thing that helps me, because I'll talk about authenticity. I still struggle with this. Let's talk about my morning yesterday, uh, how it should have gone and how it went. Um, but I've gotten better. And I think the thing that brings me back to it is. A, forgive yourself, just remain agile, um, treat. I didn't go to school for marketing. This is all self-taught in my 20 years of business. So forgive yourself, be flexible, understand that you're learning something that you weren't necessarily trained in. So you shouldn't be expected to, it's like training for a marathon. You shouldn't be expected to run that distance day one. No. Um, you might even get hurt or sprain something or develop a technique. So the thing that keeps me coming back is, Pay attention to when you feel, when you know you're like in the zone. And, and for me, like I knew live streaming was right for me because the first, I enjoy it. Like marketing is my world, but I don't like half the stuff that I have to no. do. Like I like podcasting, but I, I don't enjoy it because mm -hmm. I'll fall down the editing rabbit hole for six hours live. It's yeah. sort of like, well, you just have to, you're live. So you just have to go. Go with it. Yeah. So find find and pay attention to what works for you. If you find naturally you love live streaming, or you could say the same for blog, what's something in the marketing world that you do now that you enjoy that seems to come a little more naturally to you? And I bet if you take a look at the time you spend on that and the quality of work versus something else, you'll see that you're probably spending a less amount of time and you might even be getting greater returns. So. Yeah. You know, as you're wading into this world, the sea of marketing, it's sort of like people are never going to stop telling you what you should do. For you, it's really just finding what works best. For me, it's live streaming. I'll live stream all day, any day, instead mm -hmm. of do a podcast. Like, I know mm -hmm. it's valuable, but I can't. Or blogging, you know what I mean? Or or yeah. tweeting, you know? So yeah. that would be my my advice to you. But the fact that you are a storyteller is rooted in you. It's like you already have something going for you that frankly a lot of people wish they had, but they just don't have it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I I am just going to ask you this quick question from Mark and I'll, I'll come back onto your point again in yeah. a minute. He says, have you seen anyone famous or actors out shopping? Yeah, you know what? I haven't had a celebrity sighting in a while, but you know, they say you probably here, we probably see celebrities all the time. We just don't know because they're not on, a, you know, they're just right next to us at Trader Joe's or uh, I think it would be Sainsbury's out there. Um, yeah. So I remember one time I literally backed my car out of my garage and I was turning the corner. This was years ago. And there's a small little farmer's market on the corner of my one of my very first apartments flats. And I look over and there's there's Jane Fonda picking out some cucumber. You know, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like incredible. I've seen I've seen Angelina Jolie lately. I would say 
who's my biggest? It's it's been a while. I think um, Jane Fonda is one that sticks out though. I saw Tommy Lee. A friend of mine was visiting. You know Tommy Lee, the rocker, and we're literally yeah. we're literally driving around doing the the classic. You know, if you have friends or family that visit you from outside, you're like, all right, let's go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> so we're literally driving down Hollywood Boulevard, and I'm joking with this friend. And we look to the right and there's a car, there's a stretch limo to the right of us and it's Tommy Lee. And I was like, that is Hollywood. You know, it was one of those moments where I was like, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, they're all around. Will Ferrell. Who else? Tons. Tons, tons. Gosh. Yeah. Well, you'll know, obviously, having spent some time in London, it's it's not like that over here. You, you can... Um, I think more so in London have the occasional celebrity sighting, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be um, as much as it is obviously for you over there. It's quite different. Yeah, I actually um, miss that. It's sort of um, we can be a bit uh, ha clappy hands and loud. I mean, I, I know we. Yeah, uh, where it's like people just sort of get on with it over there. I do miss that. I bet. I yeah, we are we're a bit cheerleady leaders yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. We are a bit more reserved, I think, which, you know, you can argue both ways. It's, you know, yes. it, it can it can be good or bad. We uh, we have this sort of famous stiff upper lip where, um, yeah. you know, we don't tend to uh, sort of get too emotional. And, um, you know, that right. can be that can be a good thing, but that can also be a bad thing as well. Um, oh, yeah. So Mark's just reminded oh, there me. You go. You, yeah, you probably don't even know. Do you know Gareth Gates? You've probably never heard of him, have you? Oh, the name sounds familiar. What? Oh, he won. Um, oh, what did he win? Or did he not win? Um, <laughs> Pop Idol or something years and That's years right. and years ago. Okay. okay. I um, was obsessed with, with X Factor and Pop Idol years ago. Yeah, but, so he uh, was up. Um, oh, he was up against Will Will Young. Have you heard of Will Young? You might have heard oh, of Oh, yeah. I do. Of it, course. Was, of yeah, course. it was when... Um, did he win it and Will Young didn't? I can't remember. Anyway, it was him and Will were in the final. Yes, so Mark is absolutely right. I went to um, a local park here, actually. I took my son and, and uh, went with a friend of mine. And we were in this, in this park, just a normal children's playground. And this friend kept saying to me, he looks like Gareth Gates. And I was just like, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Couldn't be. Um, she said, no, he is, he is, he is. Yeah. I said, well, it, it probably just looks like him. And she kept on and on at me. So in the end, she went up to him and said, uh, excuse me, are you Gareth Gates? And he obviously said, yes, he was. And she was going around going, hi, oh, it's Gareth Gates, it's Gareth Gates, who is, to be fair to Gareth Gates, no, nothing wrong with him at all, but he is quite sort of Z-list here. He's not, you know, a really kind of big celebrity or anything. But that's how, um, but that's, <laughs> that's how excited we get. So she was like, oh, take my picture with him. And yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, the uh, celebrity culture is alive and well. Yeah, so it was quite, it was quite funny. Oh, hi, Kate. Um, I, love, I love it. Everyone's shouting out, I saw these people. Yeah. <laughs> Kate's, um, Kate's actually a fellow <laughs> author. Um, oh, nice. So Kate. Yeah, she writes um, women's uh, fiction. She writes beautiful novels. Um, yeah. If ever you get, yeah, if ever you get chance, check out her books. Anyway, mm -hmm. she says her mum saw Will Smith in m and in Bristol years ago. <laughs> Sounds right. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you just never know. But I think I don't think we. Well, I'm speaking obviously from me personally, but I don't think we tend to look out for them perhaps as much as as you do, and yeah. we tend to have this. I'm sure it's not that person. Um, but yeah, this the Gareth Gates thing was funny. Um, so yeah, but, <laughs> well, we all we all deserve. I was like, if we could all meet our idols. Um, yeah, I think the, the the typical Angelino. It's like I think we're all always thrilled to see a celebrity because that's what makes this town magic. But we all try to act like it's not a big deal, but it is a big yeah. deal. Like we yeah. just try to we just try to brush it off, and it's like, no, that <laughs> that's Tina Fey. You you can freak out. We're like, oh yeah, <laughs> trying to see what yeah. ice latte she ordered, and you know, I'll have what she's having. Yeah. But then again, you know, sort of bringing it back, they're just people the same as we are. Oh, yeah. And they want to be left alone. And, um, yeah. you know, it's just sort of, uh, I love Mark's questions. Uh, and, and they <laughs> sort of want to be left alone or, or um, you know, I think it's like, like anyone, they're probably approached all the time. So it's almost like go in, not fangirling, just go in and be like, oh, you know, is that the new matcha latte or whatever? Just try to strike normal conversation or just give them a wide berth. But um, I think can you imagine me, being a celebrity that be approached all the time. That'd be crazy. It would be, 
It would. It would. I think if I sort of if I was in Hollywood and I saw a famous famous actor or actress or a producer, I'd probably give them one of my free bookmarks. <laughs> so, so there you go. Do you want to make this into a film? <laughs> You know what? And that's that's unique rather than saying, I think the big thing now is it's like, it used to be, can I have your autograph? And now it's, can I have a selfie? And, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. and there are actually celebrities out there. Um, Emma Watson will actually refuse to take a selfie with you, but she'll, um, she'll, she'll autograph things and stuff because she, she would rather talk. She would rather talk to you than, than that. I thought that was yeah. very cool. And Kate's just said, and, and I I didn't know this until recently, actually. I've known Kate for a number of years now, but she Kate. was in a film. <laughs> um, wow. Kate, you're going to have to remind me. I'm thinking Vanity Fair, but I'm thinking I've got that wrong. Oh. Um, she was an extra, and she's got a photo of her somewhere um, in this amazing outfit with all her hair done and everything. Oh, my gosh, um, amazing. Yeah, you'll have to remind me because I can't remember – I can't remember which film it was now. I'm so that would sorry. be on my I epitaph. To... I've been in a film with, with Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> I know. I don't Crazy, know her personally, but everyone who has worked with her here, she's she's supposedly like incredibly nice and very down to earth. That's like just like Tom Hanks. It's like you always hear the same thing. Um, and that always like oh my heart. It's like I would hate to hear that people are. But I hear she's just like one of the most real people ever. It Vanity, was Vanity Fair. Fair. So I did get it right. Yeah. yeah. Kate's sort of a celebrity here. Hello. I know. I know. And there's me on about Gareth Gates. <laughs> there's not Listen, really any comparison. Hey, you, know, <laughs> you know, there was a time when, you know, Gareth was making headlines too. It's all good. We all have our moments. <laughs> you know? Oh, dear. Oh, we've, we've gone slightly off track. I will just ask you Mark's question while I um, yes. remember where I was going with what we were talking about before, which the was... Tangents make the best, make the best shows. How they long do, were you don't in they? London? <laughs> Did you visit yeah, anywhere else? I was in London for two years. I actually was in London during uh, at university, uh, but then I was in London, as I like to say, as a proper adult, working adult, uh, from 2010 to 2012. So I was there for about two years, uh, right in central London, and I lived um, zone two, just north of Camden in the Highgate area. Do you know where that is? Archway. Um, yeah, yeah. The northern line, I think. Uh, loved it. Uh, had a beautiful group of friends and um, it was it was lovely. I did travel partly on business. We had clients over in Amsterdam, actually, in Prague, which is one of my favorite cities. Um, I, I never made it up to Scotland, not once. Okay. And I, I still kick myself for that. I was like, it was right there. Been to Ireland, been to Wales, never made it up to I'm Edinburgh. Stupid. So that's on my list it's very it's very cold but it's very, i mean for you coming from california it would be very cold okay <laughs> i it, love i love the rain i love the green yeah bring it on bring it on um kate says she was lovely uh she was very lovely so she's still talking about reese uh with a spoon obviously we can just talk about reese for an hour I mean, <laughs> we can can't we she's lovely um, and Mark says we will be in LA in a few years' time at your premiere, as in my premiere. Um, he's meaning there you so go. When, when my film becomes a blockbuster, uh, and we I'll be, be there. I'll be there asking to take a selfie, and you'll say no. I'm actually I don't, I don't do <laughs> no, that you, anymore. You can, uh, you can be my media correspondent or something. How yes. does that sound? I knew her when. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. I'll be I'll be there with a copy of your book asking you for an autograph. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, be so good. Um, right. What else was I? Oh, yes. I know what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, messenger bots. I've spoken to various yeah. other people about this. I know that's come a bit out of the um, left field yeah. there, but okay. obviously you use messenger bots extensively. Do yeah. you? You must think they're beneficial. Do you find them beneficial? I I do. I think here's the thing with met messenger bots, and for any folks tuning in, going like. Is, what is that? Is that like a genie lamp you rub and magic? They're kind of <laughs> magic. Um, so I was inspired to use messenger bots, frankly, seeing what other people were doing, which is basically all of what social media strategy is. So if you go to my page uh, at Jessica Payne official and you type in the words live show mastery, for example, uh, there will be a bot that jumps up and in the messenger box and point you to um, something that has to do with live streaming. Messenger bots are popular. I think the biggest rule of thumb right now is automation. You've probably heard the word automation is really, really hot right now. And I love it because from a, an efficiency standpoint, 
because I run my own business, I'm an army of one, I like to automate anything I can. I think the trick with bots is remember that they're your first point of contact for anyone coming to your page um, and you can have them do just about anything, but remember that shouldn't be the first and last. So this, what you're seeing from a few bad apples is they're turning a lot of people off messenger bots because they've basically set them and forgotten that real conversation is actually preferred. Um, people can totally be fine with knowing they're engaging with a bot. We see them all the time, like GoDaddy, customers, like a lot of customer services will start you off as a bot just to try to understand what your question is. And then they'll push you over to a human to help you trouble, uh, troubleshoot that. But what we're finding is people who don't have a lot of experience with bots, they forget that second half. So that's what I like to say in terms of bots. And I'm still learning too. I think um, I've been really blown away. I use a a, a bot uh, software called ManyChat. Uh, yeah, so I've heard of that. M -A yep, M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T. Brilliant. Yep, that's um, totally user-friendly. I've seen a lot of live streamers use it. In fact, if you're interested, this is a total plug for um, RJ Redden. She's kind of known in the BeLive world. She's kind of a bot ninja in fact i think like bot ninja is her brand um i'll see if i can dig up her her handle but um she is excellent at bots but she gets the nuance the yeah. flow that needs to happen so she's a yeah. if you're interested in bots check her out because she's got a ton of free tutorials and stuff yeah, yeah. I, I have checked out it might have been one of hers actually i did subscribe to and I was very impressed. I mean, she's got graphics in hers as well. And um, that cool ninja thing. Yeah. And, and it was very, very good. And I think I haven't done it yet, but primarily because it's a time thing. It's another thing to add to the list. And yeah. Um, and also, oh. I don't get a lot of interaction where it would necessarily benefit me at the moment. Um, so right. it's definitely not something that I've ruled out. Yes. But um, it's interesting to get sort of the, the sort of, you know, the perception of, you know, from obviously you that's using it. Because yeah. we're all very, very aware that social media is changing. It's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. There's big, big change in Facebook. Um, you know, we're all kind of trying to find our feet and work out how we're going to continue to engage yeah. with the changes that they're bringing in. And yes. obviously messenger bots and automation that you mentioned is, I believe going to be the way forward and it's just the way the best way that we can do that yeah it's uh it's one of many tools that you should really consider having in your arsenal I think the biggest uh emphasis right now in terms of what I'm telling my clients is um Facebook made some changes recently and I have a uh, if you go to my page I have a recent uh, blog post up about it and people were freaking out this was a, only a couple of weeks ago I think anytime Facebook makes changes people get nervous because a lot of our world rests in the hands of Mark Zuckerberg yeah. which is kind of a myth I mean it's a free app we kind of agree to obey because it is a free app we've never paid for it once um, and so we kind of have to follow his rules but really what, uh, what I do in this blog post is I walk people back from he made some changes. Here's what they are. Here's why you should worry. Here's why you shouldn't worry. Frankly, it, it just brings us back to the beginning of when we first signed up on Facebook. And that was probably from a personal standpoint, just to socialize and connect. Yeah. So this shift is really um, bringing, is answering a lot of our complaints the past year because of fake news. He's making some shifts to try to, to, to emphasize now conversation. And so I wanted to mention that because messenger bots are, are, are popular. They're certainly a new feature that everyone's kind of rallying around. But like any new new bell or whistle, like you have to have a sound strategy. So you so and what should be at the the center of everything you do on Facebook especially is you need to start driving more conversation. Because a messenger bot's not going to serve you if no one hangs out on your page, if that makes sense. No. In my, um, in my blog post, I mentioned basically treat your page or group like a chat room, if you even remember what those yeah. were. <laughs> and it's interesting. I've been um, – I mentioned to you I've, I've done some marketing courses. And this year I'm doing um, something called the Awesome Marketing Planner. I don't know whether you've heard of it or not. It's from the Girls Mean Business. I have, yeah. 
Um, so this is what I'm doing this year. And this breaks every single month down into targets and whatever, um, just to sort of make it make you accountable and obviously gives you sort of a structure to follow. Yes. Um, part of that for me is I the, the thing that I struggle with is identifying my customer and finding out where they are because because it's so diverse. Um, you know, I could sell a book to you. I could sell a book to, um, you know, somebody's gran. It's it's right. There's no kind of, you know, without going into too much detail. Um, but what this this um, marketing sort of course has helped me to do is to identify the areas that I need to be more active on social media. And what I was going to say is that this month I did hit my Facebook likes target. So for my right. page, congrats. Which, Thank you, which is great, although we both know that likes doesn't necessarily generate business. But, you know, that's that was fantastic that I obviously got all of that. But I fell short on both Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, not LinkedIn, sorry, Instagram. And right. that's fine. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. But what's interesting is just by posting daily on both Instagram and Twitter, the figures have started to go up um, very, very slowly. But yeah. there started to be more interaction. There started to be the odd comment. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas before, both of those networks for me were just kind of sitting there, not really doing a lot. So although right. it's very, very tiny, I can see how trying to get the message in the right place is very, very beneficial. And I'm yeah. still in very, very early days with that. But it's... Um, it's it, it to me it's been actually quite fascinating to just sort of think well actually i've picked up you know two or three instagram people and with little more than putting a post on every day and trying to make it an engaging post trying to make it something that i think might be interesting um because obviously content is really hard as well isn't it it's knowing what to put on all the time especially when yeah. Yeah. It's different if you've got, like we said earlier on in the show, if you've got a new product every day, then you can say, oh, here's today's new product and here's whatever. Um, but yeah. when you've got something that, like you said, your course takes six months to make, you know, my books produce, you know, it takes a long time to produce. Um, it can be quite hard to sort of think of things to kind of keep people yeah. interested, can't it? Yeah. And I think, you know, you hit on a great thing. It's sort of like every social channel, every social network behaves a different way. There are certain expectations. There are certain things people you, that are completely okay on one channel, but t completely not okay on another channel. And then there's little bells and whistles, features that actually can serve you uh, in greater ways on certain channels and not others. Hashtags is kind of a good example. There's nothing more powerful on Instagram, I think, than a hashtag, second only to the actual image you post. Um, uh, whereas Facebook hashtags are kind of lost in the abyss. They just really don't make sense in a post. No. Twitter hashtags work as well. Um, Twitter more of a trending um, and to get eyeballs and jump on conversations. But Instagram, I think, you know, just knowing how to play the, the, the hashtag game and spending your time on that channel, part of it just knowing hashtags in your industry or category can really serve you. I think, you know, that like a strategy for Instagram is what I call brand discoverability. When you when you post on Facebook, you have a dedicated uh, list of followers who more so can see almost every post, um, but not every post. But at least you know it's going to a certain flow of people. Same for Instagram too, but what you're using in Instagram is a hashtag, which immediately, so, so if I, if I'm looking for you know, someone who posts about, um, let's say I was vegan. I'm vegetarian. I'm not vegan. But let's say I was I was embracing this new lifestyle being ve vegan. And um, I'm going to be actually actively searching on Instagram using a hashtag versus I don't do that on Facebook. I might okay. search for a, a one or two vegan profiles. But uh, but on Instagram every day, or like if I was a shoe designer, or if I was a plus size model, you know, it's like people use hashtags a lot more actively on places like Instagram, which I think, as a brand, as a, as a professional, if you know what the top five to 10 ones are that people are constantly following, it's like, the, the sky's the, the limit in terms yeah. of like, brand discoverability. Um, on Twitter, yes, as well, although that kind of hovers around one or two hashtags or so. And it takes a while, I think, to get more of a um, 
of a solid following. But that it, it's interesting because just that that little behavior is so different across those three yeah. channels. Yeah. Um, that that's that's how I'd recommend you know spending your time. So how do you find? you know, the sort of hashtags that you mentioned, I tend to use certain hashtags that I think are appropriate. But I mean, mm -hmm. how do I sort of find out what people are searching for? Are there places I can go to find that or? Well, the first thing I always, yeah, the first thing I always say is find, find influencers with the following and just pay attention to the hashtags they're using. And yeah. that's probably your best bet because especially bigger brands, they probably have armies of people doing that research for you. So don't recreate the wheel. Nothing has to be invented online. It's the work's already been done for you. You just, you know, you find, find it, it. Yeah. and repurpose it for yourself. Um, another website um, you may have heard of is called Hashtagify. <laughs> Everything. Ooh, so that's H-A-S-H. Like H -A yeah, hashtag. Tag if I. If I. And you can type that's in, like it's in beta. You can type in any hashtag and you can see kind of what the top one is. That right? Are. Is that right? Is that right? Hashtagify.com? Hashtagify.com. Yep, you got it. Yep. And there have been a few of these have, that have come out. I'm sure this guy will be acquired any second. Um, and then we'll, you'll have to pay for it. But you can search, as far as I know, you can search on Twitter and you can search on. Um, I'm just doing a quick search mystery novel. Why the heck not? Just going to search <laughs> for you. Um, did it do and it'll obviously Agatha Christie is a very popular hashtag so it'll actually spit out um the most popular related hashtags hashtag okay. suspense suspense is it, it spits it out in this beautiful like word cloud so like the word suspense it's suspense it's huge and then Agatha Christie and then a bunch of smaller words so let's say I was doing social media strategy for someone like yourself um you know using hashtagify is a very quick way to be like okay well obviously in my next Tweet and like my next Instagram, even if you're posting a spooky forest picture, because that makes sense on Instagram. You could say, yeah, in one of my favorite places on the planet is Hampstead Heath in London. So and it was because it was spooky and wild. So if I were you, I'd, you know, if let's say I went for a walk in, in Hampstead Heath and I took a spooky photo like that makes perfect sense for someone like you to post on Instagram. And you could say something like, you know you know, totally, you know, into the woods moment, you know, today at the Heath or whatever. And then you have a hashtag and you type in, you know, like um, suspense or mystery. You know what I mean? It's like the hashtag has to look and feel authentic because yeah. um, people will pick up on it. But but yeah, hashtagify is a smart tool if you just need a free resource for that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I've not heard of that one. So um, and, and that'll be useful to anybody else that's um, that's watching as well. That's obviously trying um i use hashtags um with facebook i agree they i do use them but I, i'm not entirely sure that they they do much on facebook but they yeah. do on instagram and they do on twitter um and it's just been interesting for me i mean i'm talking you know minute changes in terms of my numbers but it's just been an interesting thing to actually be yeah. aware of it um yeah you know rather than um, you know, just sort of having these accounts kind of floating around and, and not a lot happening. So, um, yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. I shall definitely have a little look and uh, come up with some more hashtags. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, we are getting, well, we are sort of running out of time now, so I don't want to hold you up too much longer, but I know you did say that you, you're you launching a new course. Yeah. So did you want to just tell us a little bit about that, what that entails and how we can find it, et cetera? Um, sure. And then Absolutely. So uh, the easiest place to find it is on my Facebook page, which you had the handle up before. It's Jessica Payne Official. Uh, you'll see the image right there and a big sign up button. And the course is called Live Show Mastery. And it was basically built out of my own journey and struggles uh, and accomplishments. Uh, this is the course I've been working on for the last you know, six months or so. And it's what I like to say, a course and a community in one. So basically, it's it's a year long, it's a monthly subscription. And with that, every, uh, every month, you get a bunch of stuff from me that basically are packed filled with they're filled with time savers, and results boosters. So essentially, the course is how to go live on Facebook in minutes, and then produce a show like a live show or just live content, month on month of a professional quality, um, in a way that can benefit or grow your business. But the, the catch is it's not one of those fat, cumbersome courses where, you know, you have to finish the course to start your show. Like you're going live that night. 
In fact, that's like my first challenge to you, which can scare some people away, but yeah, <laughs> actually yeah. you and I both know anything with practice. It's sort of like, once you go live, it's actually not scary. The whole word live scares people, but anyway. Yeah, well I so, used to, the first show I was a nervous wreck, the second show slightly better, um, and I've noticed that gradually my show preparation time has got less and less and less and less and less. Yeah. So it used to be I'd sort of have like an hour before the show getting everything ready and then yeah. it was 45 minutes and then it was half an hour. And now I'm yeah. sort of like anywhere between sort of 15 and 20 minutes because yeah. I'm just used to it. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know how, you know, I know what the format is as long as I know what, who my guest is and, and what they do and, you know, what we're going to talk about them. Yeah. You know, I'm good to go. And the rest just sort of takes care of itself, doesn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, it's like like anything you learn, it becomes muscle memory. And so what I pride myself in this course is we start at we start at ground zero. OK, if you've never picked up one of these before and gone live, you're going to do that the first the first day, the first night. And I teach you on Facebook live because it's the easiest, although you can use the same strategies for Instagram. You can go live and Twitter. But we focus predominantly in Facebook at the start just to get people kind of comfortable. And it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's workshops, troubleshooting, how to guides. Uh, I literally serve up, I call them toolkits every month. So it's like, again, you don't need to recreate the wheel. Like I'll show, like I have an agenda template, a script template, an outro template, you just fill in the blanks. And this was born out of me, like you said, when I first started, I was spending just way too much time doing this. It's like, there's got to be an easier way to get people going live sooner. And what lit that fire was the fact that I know live has the potential to be an incredibly powerful and positive tool. So yeah. I built this course to basically empower people who want to create positive change in their business or life, just get them on live and going. So that's why like from day one, uh, you can go and then, you know, every single month you, you know, we, uh, we connect. So you can find more information on the course. It's enrollment is open now, actually. And I've got a deal going for your followers. So if anyone tunes in and clicks through from your page or one of your followers, if uh, there's a coupon right now, if you type in go live now, uh, I give one month free. And that's really just for your followers, just as a thank oh, you for having me on the show. And honestly, to get people started. So if you again, just go to at Jessica Payne official, uh, click on the big blue button. And then you'll, go, you'll live, more go live now, did you say? That's right. Go live, go live now. now, all one word. And you get money. <laughs> Put it in three words. Uh, let me just change that. That's yep. brilliant. Thank you ever so much for that. And we'll go live now. Sure. There we go. So it's there for anybody that um, obviously is picking this up uh, on yep. replay as well. Absolutely. Um, feel free to go along to Jessica's Facebook page, which um, again, I'll put it in the comments, but it has been on the screen. Um, go along, check out her, her course, pop that code in, and uh, you'll get a month free, which is very generous. So thank you so yeah. much, Jessica, for You're that. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that's that's it, I think. Um, yeah. It's been fascinating talking to you. We, we kind well. of got a bit sidetracked with celebrities and <laughs> well, you know whatever. What? It's fine. It's a but Friday. Hey. It's all organic. <laughs> I know it's been uh, it's been brilliant and I'm really really grateful that you you came on um, on my show tonight and hopefully we'll um, we shall keep in touch and um, yes. hopefully our paths will cross again um, soon but thank you ever so much and so uh, yeah I shall see you again soon all right thanks so much bye everyone bye bye